So you're interested in learning C-sharp, but then you hear about this .NET thing. What's that? How does it relate to C-sharp? Are they the same thing? Because people talk about C-sharp developers, and they also talk about .NET developers kind of interchangeably. Well, they are different. And today, I'm going to explain the difference between the two from a beginner's perspective. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people to code the right way. Now let's start with the .NET framework. The .NET framework is a platform that allows running .NET applications on computers and mobile devices. Now all of these computers and mobile devices have operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or in the mobile and tablet world, iOS and Android. And the .NET platform allows applications to run on any of these operating systems. Now for beginners, I often like to compare an operating system to the head chef in a busy kitchen. There's orders coming in and those things need to be distributed and managed. Now in operating system land, that means computer hardware. Your applications are asking for things like things to be calculated by the processor, things to be stored in memory and on the hard disk, and the operating system behind the scenes makes all of that happen from those application requests. And working directly with an operating system is not easy. But some developers have to do that. They have to be aware of how all the hardware works and how memory is assigned. And they have to be bogged down by all these details. And those people are great and we thank them. But for most developers, we're just concerned with our application and providing value to the user. And we don't want to have to care about the minutia that happens at the operating system level because it would slow us down. So one of the main components of the .NET framework is something called the Common Language Runtime or CLR for short. This handles the communication between our application and the operating system. Going back to our metaphor of the kitchen, think of the CLR as the waiter. It takes our orders and what we want to do, and it communicates them in a language that the kitchen understands. We don't interact directly with the kitchen because the waiter does it for us. And that's what the CLR does for our .NET applications and the operating system. Now let's talk about C Sharp. Sadly, our waiter, the CLR, doesn't speak human. It has a very specific standard and protocols for how it expects to be communicated with. And there are a variety of languages that meet this specification. C Sharp is one of them. But you can also use other languages like F Sharp and Visual Basic. You can even roll your own language if you really wanted to so long as you follow the specification that the CLR expects. So now that we understand that the C-sharp language is used to communicate with the .NET CLR, we can talk about the other piece of the .NET framework, and that's the Base Class Library, or BCL. Now to explain the BCL, let's use another metaphor. Imagine that you're building a treehouse. There are certain items that almost every treehouse needs. Sturdy wood, a good ladder, windows, and maybe even a cool rope swing. You could find and prepare all these materials yourself, but that would take a lot of effort. Who has time to learn to smelt glass panes for treehouse windows? And this is where the base class library comes in. It's kind of like a hardware store that has all these pre-made components inside it that you can select and modify to suit your needs, which saves you a lot of time. You need to work with text? There's class components for that. You wanna access data over a network? There's components for that too. The BCL has tens of thousands of code components that you can pull into your applications so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you're writing common code routines. And this all follows the theme of making developers more productive. You don't necessarily need a really deep understanding of how networking works. You can pull in the network components from the BCL, 
make some tweaks, read some documentation, and you're up and running. Now, the base class library is not the only place that you can go to find code libraries. Now, because it's built in, it is kind of the manufacturer branded storefront. However, if you need something different, something special that isn't included in the BCL, there's another place you can check. The NuGet package manager is kind of the aftermarket for code libraries. And it's called a package manager because oftentimes it combines multiple code libraries into a single package, which makes it very convenient to download and use in your projects. Now you can think of NuGet as the Amazon of code libraries. When you're building applications, you'll often find tasks that are common or repetitive. For example, if you're working with statistics, there's pre-built statistical packages available to you so you don't have to reinvent that wheel. It's like choosing to have a pizza delivered rather than going through the process of making it from scratch. So much easier, right? The last thing I wanna cover is the versioning of the .NET framework because it is confusing. Now the original .NET framework was made in 2001 and it was released and it was Windows only. And back then, there wasn't mobile and tablets in the cloud and being Windows only was pretty okay. Now you fast forward 15 years and now we have all of these different devices, we have cloud and Microsoft correctly decided that they needed to support multiple operating systems. So they split into two versions of the .NET framework. And then the problem they encountered was that the version numbers on the original .NET framework that was Windows only and the cross-platform one were starting to converge and overlap. And that was very confusing for people. So what they've done is they've said, if we say .NET framework, that's the old version. And if we say just plain .NET, that is the modern cross-platform goodness. And that started with version five. Now, at the time of this video, we're on version seven with version eight about to come out. And they are releasing these new versions of .NET about every year. But if you're going and reading documentation or forum posts or looking at books, if they say .NET framework, they're generally talking about the old stuff. If they say just .NET, they're generally talking about the new stuff. But as you talk to developers and people like me that have been working on it for 20 years, it's really hard for us to stop saying .NET framework and just say .NET. So just be aware of that when you're out there. So I hope this video helped you understand the difference between .NET and the language that communicates with it, C Sharp. And if you'd like to start your C Sharp journey the right way, check out the courses at Skill Foundry. Happy coding.